Jenkins taking the lead and assuring people the Ebola situation is under control. Uh, you've been very out front on this thing, but it says it, kind of, it, it wasn't your choice. If, if it were up to you, the CDC would be, but they kind of said, you're, you're the guy that people know around town, so you take the lead on, on being the face and the voice here. Well, uh, actually, I want to give a big uh, hand to Mike Rollins because he was the face and the, and the voice that did the interviews uh, while I did the instant command for the first, oh, about 50 hours. And now I'm able to do a little bit of that, but I'll leave here and go straight to instant command. Most of my work is just meticulous, um, you know, moving people around, uh, putting people in position. Uh, so it's a team effort. It's the city, it's the schools, it's the county, right. and, of course, the state and the federal government. Um, I, I was off last week and was kind of watching this from afar. And what struck me was, from the very beginning, uh, it seemed like we were reinventing the wheel. I mean, we do these disaster drills all the time to what if this happens, what if that happens. And all of a sudden we're going, I, I was thinking to myself as I was, I was sitting watching it on television, why are these people still in the apartment? And why are they still stuck in that apartment with contaminated bedding and clothing and all that? And it took a couple of days for experts to figure that out. Well, I'll take over uh, instant command. Uh, the decision was made with, between me and Tom Frieden and the state's pot, top public health official uh, that I should do that on Wednesday afternoon. So we whiteboarded all the things. And one of my top priorities was moving that family and taking care of those soiled items. But this was days into this incident. It just seemed like the first thing that should have been done was people be moved out of the apartment and all of that contaminated, potentially deadly infected stuff be removed and it was it was oh. what five days in Ob obviously but here, here's the situation I can tell you what I know what they were dealing with before I took over because after I took over I was dealing with the same thing uh, when I when I call the person who ultimately took the family who's a faith leader here in the Metroplex uh, I told him I, my words to him when he asked why no one else did I said there is no room at the inn uh, to this person I, we have tried every apartment complex, every housing authority, no one will take this family. The fear was such that we could not find a place to take them anywhere in this county. And this faith leader stepped forward and made that possible. Even uh, today, uh, we are finishing up, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna have to use extraordinary powers and, and pot potentially commandeer vehicles to move that uh, material because of the um, ridiculous permitting process that, that's required to, to, to uh, move that material, which needs to be streamlined. Uh, this is a teaching moment for the rest of the, of the United States. I'm very proud of the work that the disease detectives and health and human services workers and epi teams are doing on the ground, but there's some legal challenges of this that need to be fixed but ASAP. We, we knew this was going to happen. We knew that someday some person was going to come here with Ebola and we're going to have to figure out what to do with it. And now you're trying to figure out the permit, not, and I'm not laying this on you, I'm laying it on whoever the permitting agency that is that says you can't move this material. That seems ludicrous that we hadn't thought about this and streamlined this beforehand and all of a sudden we're going, what do we do now? It, um, it, we've got to get better at it. As a nation, um, we've all got to work together. Uh, state to state as well, because some of these materials have to cross state lines for a variety of reasons. So we've all just got to work together. We've got to trust the science. We've got to get a lot, um, a lot faster in our uh, bureaucracy um, for the for the next time that this happens, and it will likely uh, happen again because a disease knows no borders. Um, should this individual, and you certainly, we, I think everyone hopes that he will recover. Should he be deported? He, co he committed a crime, did he not? Uh, I, I, you know, pe people are innocent until proven guilty. I don't know the facts of that. I've kind of torn off the rearview mirror. But if, of, we, if what we believe to be true is in fact true, he should not have been allowed in the country in the first place. Should he be required to leave the country? Well, uh, right now my focus is, and, and prayers are on, he's in a very grave situation, so my hope is that he survives. And, and my hope for Louise, who may be uh, watching this, is that we will um, work to treat everyone that we're, m we're monitoring and the three young men that are, are with Louise mm -hmm. uh, as compassionately as possible. I'll let the federal government decide uh, what happens uh, with Duncan in the future. Right now, my prayers are that um, you know, God spares his life. Okay.
Judge Jenkins, thanks very much. I know it, 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 it's like the last thing you want to be doing right now, but, but somebody had to take the lead in this, and we appreciate you coming up front on it. Thank you. All right. Uh, we're going to show you live pictures uh, right now in Omaha where the, um, that uh, crew member from NBC News is arriving. Uh, going to be taken to a hospital there. Uh, the latest American uh, to come down with uh, Ebola was evacuated along with the NBC News crew from uh, West Africa and flown on that specially equipped medical aircraft back. Uh, that's the same hospital where another doctor was treated successfully earlier. And uh, that NBC uh, photo freelance photojournalist uh, arriving now in Omaha.